Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode eight, where the question of the day is, do good fences make good neighbors? Hmm. I wonder what your thoughts are about that. My first thought when I hear that question is the song lyrics. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Would you be my neighbor? Does anybody remember that TV show, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? I know I'm aging myself here. Well, some would say Mr. Rogers didn't prepare me for the people in my neighborhood. That is why I say good fences do make good neighbors, because fences represent boundaries, which is what I want to talk about today. And boundaries are, in my opinion, necessary for healthy and thriving relationships to exist and to grow. My favorite poet, Robert Frost, wrote a poem called Mending Wall, in which he addresses that very question. The poem is about two neighbors who are deciding if a stone wall between their properties should be repaired. One wants to keep the wall. The other wants it torn down. So when one neighbor asks the other if the wall is even necessary, that neighbor responds that good fences make good neighbors. This is obviously a metaphor for human relationships, specifically boundaries and the need for them. Both the physical wall in the poem and the invisible boundary lines that exist in relationships, both of them require work to maintain them. In the poem, one neighbor saw the need for the wall, while the other wasn't sure. Similarly, some people like boundaries and some don't. So if boundaries are necessary, what are some of the advantages of them? First, they are rules or guidelines for how we want to be treated in our relationships. If you don't tell people you are in a relationship with what bothers or triggers you, how can they avoid doing the very things that cause you to be upset? Second, they establish what is acceptable and unacceptable behavior. That kind of speaks, you know, to the first point. Third, boundaries set clear expectations for and needs within the relationships. Within the relationship, just like fences clearly define property lines, boundaries help people know their role and they keep you from tending to someone else's garden, so to speak. Fourth, boundaries are there for protection. They keep you from harming the other person and vice versa in ways that could be manipulative, you know, emotionally damaging or abusive. They help overall to prevent toxic situations and relationships. I've read that some personal benefits of setting healthy and clear boundaries are that your needs are met in a relationship. You have a feeling of peace and safety. You feel respected by yourself and others. Improved communication. You have less anxiety and stress. And you feel understood by others. There's a quote that boundaries give us clarity about which is or isn't ours to take and how much of it is ours to take. That reminds me of an expression that takers don't have any limits, so the givers have to set them, something like that. Now I have to say, there is a major downfall to setting boundaries, and that is everybody's not going to like them, and some people are going to fight against the boundaries that you set. You may even lose some people in your life and lose some relationships, especially if you reinforce the boundaries when they're violated. I heard someone say that if you set a boundary and it upsets someone, that doesn't mean you should move or erase the boundary because your boundaries are primarily there for your protection. Remember that. They're not for the comfort of other people. They are an insurance policy for you to have healthy relationships with other people. Think of boundaries as self, part of self-care. Someone else said that when you feel yourself becoming angry, resentful, or exhausted, pay attention to where you haven't set a healthy boundary. That is probably the root of the problem. I'm thinking of a time when I struggled with saying no to people 
because I didn't want to deal with, you know, reactions to my refusal or, or hurt their feelings or upset them in any way. But saying yes to every request caused me to become run down. I became resentful because I wasn't doing what I wanted to do or what I felt led to do or what I thought I should do. I was just pleasing people. So I had to start setting boundaries in that area. You may have heard the expression, no is a complete sentence. No, period. I had to learn that. I also learned that it's easier to turn a no into a yes than a yes into a no. I'm going to say that again. It is easier to turn a no into a yes than a yes into a no. Because once you commit to something, the letdown is great if you don't follow through. So I tell people no outright, or I'll have to think about it. I no longer overcommit, and I'm no longer concerned with people's reactions to my saying no. If I don't feel what they're asking me to do is best for me or something I should do, no, period. So let me share with you what I read boundaries sound like. It's not my job to fix others. It's okay if others get angry. It's okay for me to say no. It's not my job to take responsibility for others. I don't have to anticipate the needs of others. It's my job to make me happy. Nobody has to agree with me. I have a right to my own feelings. I am enough, just as I am. So if you don't remember anything else from today's episode, Remember, boundaries are in a nutshell, self-care and protection. And what you allow to happen in your relationships will continue until you stop it. Boundaries are the fences you build to create good neighbors and overall good and healthy relationships. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.